um, meeting going on. So um, again, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Today's webinar is about stress. My name is Elena Jordan, and I'm joining you from the United States. If you're joining us from Asia, good evening. If you're joining us from the United States, good morning. And once again, Europe, um, good afternoon. I'm going to share my screen with you now. And um, let's see if we can get started. Yep, here we go. Shrink myself and play. There we go. Stress. Stress. How do we handle it? So I know a lot of you are doing a lot of things all at once. You may be working in a doTERRA business. You may be working full time. You have families. You perhaps have small children or big children. You may have grandchildren. You may have made a move recently. I heard about a lot of you recently that within the last six months or so, maybe the last year, have moved into new houses, new apartments. So that can be stressful. You may have some happy stress. So a move can be a happy stress or a sad stress. It depends on which way you're moving or if you liked your old place, or you're moving for a good reason. Um, even things like weddings can be extremely stressful to us. And the thing that we don't realize is that the body does not know, is this a positive or a negative? All it knows is how it affects us. So whether we're celebrating something wonderful, like our birthday or a wedding, or some other joyous event, even a happy move, or we're celebrating or really uh, mourning something sorrowful or solemn, the death of someone that was close to us, or a divorce, or um, another stressful um, relationship that we may be involved in. We may be watching our kids grow up and that feels stressful to us or move away. Or our own children may be having um, difficulties in their marriages. All of these things can put enormous stress on us and we don't even realize that. Add to that all the um, things that are happening on earth and I don't wanna go into all the, the tragedies that we've seen lately, but if we don't learn to de-stress, it can be painful for us. We may not even realize what's happening before it's too late. And yes, folks, it does take a toll on your body. So I'm gonna introduce everybody here and then I've got some great new amazing strategies. So let's get started. So number one is thank you to our Blue Diamond team. So all the people that are on this call that are helping, um, the leadership team that helps with um, these calls every week and with um, answering questions and really guiding all of us every day. Again, I'm Elena Jordan here with Elizabeth Ho, Hong and Shu Li, Sang Lui, Quen Wei, and Lorinda Walker, our Rising Diamonds, Mian Fu, Karen, and Kat, Sri Malati, Denise Schwendeman, and Nicole Tay, and our Rising Platinums, Swen B, Joyce Lin Shua, Sihan, Sandra, Carmen, Nicole, Alan, Heather, David, and Michelle. Um, thank you um, to everyone listed here. Thank you also to our rising gold, Melanie, Sarita, Teresa, Bryce, Kok Hang, Joyce, Sun Kun, Marie, Zheng Zheng, Agnes, Lydia, Wei, Yoke Mei, Eng Zi, Xiu, Anne, Sylvia, Laura, Lynn, Kathleen, Pui Hoon, Shirley, Joyce Lynn, Telia, and Vince C. Thank you to all of our leaders. The ideas uh, expressed today in today's call are based on the book, Essential Oils Healthcare for Today, A Beginner's Guide. It is a list or a compilation of the top 50 health issues in an A to Z format with some basic recommendations for what to um, uh, apply to the skin, um, internally ingest and also diffuse. What I like about the book is it also gives you suggestions for three months or a, um, a cheat sheet as it's called in the book. It's your 90 day plan on how to get healthy and on how to get rid of some of these more pesky issues that bother us from time to time. It is not a cure for any disease, but it is a helper. And it can help you if you're just getting started, if you're a beginner, or it can um, aid you in helping someone else who's getting started. So I like it as a way for people to, to jump in right away and not feel nervous. So let's get going. So. Number one, I want you to get out a piece of paper and a pencil. If you haven't done that already, 
And I actually told you I was getting out my piece of paper and pencil, but I want you to get out your piece of paper and pencil also. I'm actually going to give you a minute before I start talking about the slide, or you can do this on your phone, but we're ready to write something down. So I'm going to give you a minute and go. Okay, that's been about a minute. I want to talk about a little bit about this first slide. So as you can see here, it has some steps on it, step one and step two. And we're actually going to go to step three and step four, and then I'm going to walk you through a small process that I think can help you. If you would like, you may take a photograph or um, a picture of this screen if you want to do some of these activities later. But I strongly suggest that you walk through this activity either now or later. It will help you. So for those of you who don't know, um, I lead a pretty active life, like I'm sure all of you do. And um, I was home with my son, my daughter's away at college, and he was kind of horsing around and throwing himself on the floor. And the lighting wasn't that great. It was nighttime, and he had on a pair of beige slippers. And lo and behold, the carpet in the room we were talking and laughing in was also beige didn't see his foot, I stepped over it and I broke my toe. Now I've broken, I have to say, most of my toes before, except of my two big toes. Most of those I broke doing, during sports when I was younger. So this is kind of, uh, I don't know, bringing me back to my teenage years when I was doing a lot of sports and breaking all sorts of fingers and toes and things like that. It is not fun to have a broken toe. It's not the worst thing in the world, obviously, but it's just one of those little minor annoyances. So I almost wasn't going to have the toe checked because I've had so many before. I was just going to tape it up myself. And I happened to bring my mother to the doctor, who's my own doctor. And I said, um, Dr. Gershman, while I'm here, I fell last night and I broke my toe. Would you just take a look at it? And the toe had turned black at that point. And she looked at the toe and she said, mm, I don't like the way that looks. Please go to the orthopedist. So now I'm going to a second doctor. And I happen to know the orthopedist really well. She's also a woman doctor, really lovely, Dr. Dial. And I get into the office. She x-rays my toe. Sure enough, it's broken. She starts wrapping it up. And lo and behold, she says, I want to give you something. I think you need it. And what does she hand me? She hands me these pages. So that was a real wake-up call for me, folks, because I wasn't in there for stress, and I wasn't in there because I necessarily have high blood pressure or any of the other indicators of stress, physical indicators of stress. But I'm sure she was thinking, if this lady has broken this many toes, and now she just broke another one, she must be under a lot of stress. Maybe she's just moving a little bit too fast. And so I took it to heart, I looked at the pages, and I went through it myself, and now I'm asking you to do the same. What I didn't talk to that much about the doctor that day was how I should probably be using more essential oils to de-stress, and maybe I'm not using enough. But that's what I'm talking to you about today, so let's get going. So step one, number one, rate your current stress level on a scale of one to 10. And it's okay if you feel on a scale of one to 10 that you're really at a 45, I get it, and that things are just overwhelming for you, but try to keep it on a one to 10. And if you're at the 10 level, I'm so sorry, but we're here to help you today. So number one, rate your stress level. Here's the other thing. Sometimes we tend to underestimate our stress. We'll say, oh no, I'm doing just fine. But then we start actually looking at some of the things that might be stressors and we realize mm, maybe it's a little worse than I thought. So once you've rated your stress, let's go to step two. Think about your stress bucket, the causes and symptoms of your stress and what you're currently doing to lower your stress level. So your causes of stress are the things that fill the bucket. Some can be changed, others cannot. Some come in a torrent, others in a steady, though small, drip, drip form. Why are you under stress at the moment? 
you know, we'll tell you a little bit about me besides my broken toe. Um, I have my 88 year old mother living with me and obviously I run a big doTERRA business and sometimes it goes extremely smoothly and sometimes there's some bumps in the road. So those are just some, I also run a house and I'm married and I have two children at you, as you know, so um, there's always something going on here. So symptoms of stress, the things that happen to you as the level rises, symptoms affect the body, the mind, and behavior. See below examples of each. How does it affect your body, moods, everyday life? So body, heart rate, aches, pains, or dizziness. Mind, poor concentration, poor memory, worrying too much. How many of you get into bed at night and can't get to sleep because you have a million things going through your, your brain? Behavior. Difficulty sleeping, changes in smoking habits, changes in, in drinking habits, changing, changes in eating habits. So I tend to be one of those people who eats through stress. I don't, I'm not one of the people who says, oh no, that's okay. I'm too stressed. Don't give me anything to eat. So uh, yeah, all of those are not healthy. We want to be able to look at the behaviors and begin to address them. And then finally, solutions to stress, the things that lower the level in the bucket, what do you do now to reduce your level of stress? So I'm imagining that everybody who's on this call has used essential oils at one time or another to reduce stress, but I'm going to give you a whole list of things that you can begin to use to reduce stress on a regular basis. One of the things that's interesting that's not quite um, listed here, but we're going to see in a minute, that can cause stress is actually loneliness. As human beings, we have gone to becoming a much more solitary society. Many of us live alone. We don't live in communities. We don't see people on a regular basis. And while people can get on our nerves if we have to live with them on a regular basis, really the best way to stay alive and healthy and lower your stress is to live and be in community. So if you are a person that lives alone, you might want to seek out community on a regular basis whether that's through a fun activity that you like to do, or moving close to family members perhaps, or if that's not possible, maybe joining a club or a church or some other organization where you're going to see people on a regular basis. Step number three, now rate the target level of stress that you would like to be at on a scale of one to two. Now I, I have to say, I'd love to be at a three. I think that would be really great, but realistically maybe a four is more realistic, at least the way my life is now. Um, juggling a lot of things, it might be, I don't know, unrealistic to get to three, but let's say between a three and a four, how about you? So now let's identify and use stress management techniques to reduce your stress that will work for you. So I'm just going to read them off here because there's a long list. And you can, as I said, take a photograph of this and you can begin to use some of these stress uh, techniques, uh, de-stress techniques, mindful meditation, relaxation techniques like progressive muscle relaxation, massage therapy, deep breathing, guided imagery or visualization, aromatherapy, ding, 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 yoga, tai chi, qigong, pilates, or really any type of exercise, habit reshaping, creative therapy, mandalas, journaling, friend therapy, practice gratitude, develop resilience, sleep more, hydration. Yes, getting more water can actually help us to de-stress because it flushes the toxins from our body. Exercise, healthy diet, Minimize caffeine, nicotine, and alcohol. So caffeine is usually my troublesome one. I don't smoke, thank goodness, and I don't drink very much. Um, only on, on very festive occasions, but caffeine. If I'm under stress, I hit the coffee pot. Stretching, organize your space, time management, alter causes of stress. So really look at the causes of stress and say to yourself, okay, how can I adjust this thing? What is it? How am I interacting with this? Can I address it? Talk about it. Say no. That's a big one. Turn off the phone and the computer. Have more fun. Money management, another one of my favorites. I know that um, it is a statistic that says that 80% of divorces are caused by money stressors. So if you're having money stress, you want to look into that. Um, it is manageable, folks. There's some great books out there. doTERRA actually has a great book on its website. 
um, called uh, The Four Tools of, of Money Management. And um, one of my favorite uh, radio personalities, he's broadcast here in the United States, but really all over the world because he has a podcast, is a guy named Dave Ramsey. And he's written a book called Total Money Makeover, which is a life changer. So if you're having money difficulties, please look into these resources. And finally, lifestyle management. What are you doing that's causing your stress? Could you do something different? Okay, so now let's look at those stress buckets that they talked about before. Okay, first of all, what is a stress bucket? And I know that a little bit of, this is a little bit small, but I think we can read it the right size. So this um, particular bucket is broken down into four categories that are filling the bucket. So on the top left, academic stress refers to stress associated with studying, including study load, performance, and conflict with lecturers or tutor tutors. I know we have a few students on this um, call, but I want to also throw in there academic slash work stress. So are you um, uh, maybe working too hard or your workload is too large, your performance is in question perhaps, or you're having conflict with people at work? Okay, so interpersonal stress includes stress from your relationships and your room, room, with your roommates, so anybody that you live with, parents, friends, and boyfriends, girlfriends, or husbands and wives. And then intrapersonal stress includes stress from your physical health, financial, financial situation, and mental health issues, for example, depression or anxiety. And then environmental stress refers to things in your work and living environments, including new and unfamiliar situations or conflicts between people you live with, such as your parents. It could also mean a pet that's causing you trouble. You don't know. Your environment can include things at work or your home. Maybe there's a drafty window or a leaky roof. Things that maybe you need to repair. Your environment can be um, even bright lights coming in and not allowing you to sleep. So think about your environment. So here's your... On the right hand side, this is the, so look at the buffer zone. This is the area between our stress level and our overflow point. The more that you are able to lower your stress level, the greater buffer zone there is. And at the bottom of the bucket, too much stress will cause our stress bucket to overflow. By using our coping skills, we can keep our stress levels down. But there is such a thing as recycled stress on the left-hand side, recycled stress from unhelpful coping skills. Recycled stress comes from unhelpful coping skills that provide some short-term relief but cause you more trouble in the long run. Examples include avoiding the problem or using alcohol and drugs to cope or doing things like I've done, like drinking too much coffee, which makes you a jittery mess, or even overeating. Temporarily, you might feel, wow, that cake made me feel great. But when your pants don't fit, that can cause recycled stress. Lower right-hand corner, emotion-focused coping skills refers to those strategies that you use to decrease the negative emotions that you experience. These strategies are useful when it is difficult to change the source of the problem. And finally, problem-focused coping skills refers to strategies that you use to change the source of the problem. These strategies are used when you have some influence over the situation. And I would suggest that many of the things that are stressors to us, we do have influence over, whether it's talking to the person or removing ourselves from the situation or um, immediately seeking ways to de-stress, all of those things are under our control. Okay, so now, here's a stress bucket explained. Ex I'm sorry, this is a stress bucket example. So on the top left, academic stress, more assignments, disagreement with tutor or boss, poor results, problems with the group assignment. Interpersonal, arguments with girlfriends or uh, spouse, feeling lonely, only making friends over the internet, not in person, or maybe not making friends at all. Intrapersonal stress, poor diet, living on caffeine, uh-oh, that's me. Anxiety, worrying about money. Environmental stress, roommates often argue, I'm caught in the middle and can't focus on my studies, looking for new accommodation. Um, bottom right, emotion-focused coping skills, relaxation and breathing to manage anxiety symptoms, talking to a friend over the internet, seeking support from family. And unhelpful coping skills would be that create recycled stress using alcohol and or drugs to take my mind off worries, pretending that the problem will go away without doing anything about it. Oy, I have definitely done that. 
and problem-focused coping skills. Join a social club to make friends, learn communication skills to help manage conflict better, develop a healthy eating plan, learn time management skills. And I have to say, I'm, I tend to be the one that does the problem-focused coping skills. I want to tackle the thing head on if I possibly can. I'm not always able to, and sometimes I slip back, but that's usually um, where I would take my problems. Okay, now, my strict stress bucket. Now let's fill in your own. I'm going to ask you to take a minute. You can either fill this in now or you can fill it in later, but I want you to know the categories. Academic stress, interpersonal stress, intrapersonal stress, environmental stress, unhelpful coping skills that contribute to recycled stress, emotion-focused coping skills, and problem focused coping skills. Now, I will tell you, I did this exercise myself. I didn't use this piece of paper because I had so much to write, but I wound up opening up a Word document and using this as a model. I also use the example and the original document for myself, and I walked myself through it step by step. It took me about a half an hour, but I have to say, once I was finished, I felt so much better because I was able to basically write everything down on the piece of paper and um, and really get everything in one place. And so I looked at it all at once and I thought, aha, that's why the doctor gave me this sheet. Now I'm gonna go back one, I have, I have a feeling somebody wants to take a picture of the last slide. I'm gonna go back one minute for everybody to take a plat. So this is the stress bucket example. You wanna take a photo. And the stress bucket explained. Do you wanna take a photo of that? Okay, so now I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna give you some more, um, some tips on um, uh, concrete ways that we can reduce stress. So let's get started. Okay, number one, past tense. Yes, Tens think of it as tension in the past. It's our tension blend, but it should be really our easing tension blend. The primary benefits are that it eases tension in the head and neck, helps reduce stress, package for convenient application in a roll-on bottle, and its practical uses are apply to the neck and shoulders when at work to relieve stress and tension, use past tense before taking a test, presenting in public or high stress situations, apply to the wrists, feet, or neck to calm a high-strung child, and use at night before bedtime to help wind down before going to sleep. Now I have to say, I love the way past tense smells. Some people love it, some people don't, of course. But um, I never even thought of using it before high stress situations. I always think of it just for head and neck tension or for actual aches and pains. So I like the idea that you can use it before different activities to really um, make a difference in how you're feeling and that it's fine to use on, ch on children. Number two, balance. Primary benefits are promotes whole body relaxation, it soothes sore muscles and joints, and it evokes feelings of tranquility and balance. We've talked a lot about balance over the last few weeks, maybe three or four weeks since convention, because Dr. Hill has reiterated that he loves balance and he wants us to put it on our feet every day. Every morning when you wake up, try a couple of drops of balance on each foot. It's a wonderful way to start your day. Practical uses, begin your day, here it is, by putting balance on the bottom of your feet to lessen stress throughout the day. Feeling anxious, apply balance to your wrists or neck to help with nerves, or diffuse in your car during road trips to create a calming, soothing environment. And while it is a gro grounding blend, it is not a sleeping blend, so if you diffuse it in your car, don't worry, you're not gonna fall asleep and then drive off the road. You're just gonna feel a little bit less tense so if you, especially if you're going on long drives or you're in a lot of traffic or you have some passengers that are yak, yak, yakking too much, this is a great blend for you. Okay, Zendocrine, yes, amazing for de-stressing, why? Because it decreases the, um, toxins, supports the body's natural ability to rid itself of unwanted substances, it supports healthy liver function, it's purifying and detoxifying to the body systems, it can be consumed daily for one week as part of a kickstart weight loss program. And doTERRA endocrine oil has a pungent, herbaceous, and floral scent. I have to say, I love Zendocrine um, 
because it, I, for me, I smell mostly the, the florals and I just love it. It smells yummy to me. And when I know it's doing a really good thing, um, that makes it even more important. I usually apply Zendocrine blend over my adrenals because I feel like my, our adrenals get so much stress just based on our busy society and our, on our world. You want to make sure that you're applying it exactly where you need it. Um, so basically the adrenals are on our lower back and you can apply that um, throughout the day, but especially in the morning or when we're feeling tension at the end of the day. Okay, let's talk about the granddaddy of them all, serenity or calming or restful, or restful blend. It lessens feelings of tension and calms emotions. It diffuses into a subtle aroma, ideal for relaxation, promotes relaxation and restful sleeping. You can diffuse it to help promote relaxation and decrease stress, Apply to the bottoms, bottoms of the feet at bedtime to help wind down before going to sleep. And apply two to three drops into a warm bath with Epsom salts to create peaceful, renewing, to create a peaceful, renewing aroma. And of course, we know serenity also comes in soft gels, a wonderful way, a one-two punch, if you will, to really wind down and get to sleep at night. For those of you who are not great sleepers, I would ask you to look at your sleep routine. Are you um, going to bed with the phone under your pillow or do you have the TV on until you drop off to sleep? Do you have a lot of light coming in your windows? Are you sleeping in a room that's too hot or too cold or maybe even too messy? And so it's, it's just very distracting to you. You want your bedroom to be a peaceful environment that allows you to kind of roll off to sleep. So look at your sleep habits, look at your sleep environment and see if you can make any positive changes. Okay, for diffusing, I love these three. I love bergamot. It is um, one of the members of the citrus family, but has a sort of a warm florally aroma that I just love. I like to combine it. Um, I used to combine it with one of our other fur oils, but now I'm combining it with Siberian fur and lavender. And this combo, um, equal drops of each. So if you were doing two, two, and two, that would be just about right for a small diffuser. If you had a large diffuser, you could go to as many as 10 10 drops each, but a really wonderful, warm, relaxing aroma. And I have to say, for those of you who have tried a Siberian fur, it's great, isn't it? And if you haven't tried it, please get it. It is really a wonderful new essential oil and smells so, um, I don't know, piney and, and I, don't, I just love it. So, so like a, where you're walking through a conifer forest, it's delicious. So enjoy this diffusing blend. So here's the interesting thing about many of the recommendations that I've made this on this particular call. So, oh, my last recommendation, I forgot this one. Um, rose hand lotion or the rose touch roll-on after an evening bath or shower. So the rose touch roll-on, as you know, is brand new. I've been using it every single night. I just love it. I'm actually putting it on my face because I think it's helping with my wrinkles, but I've heard of people putting it on their cuticles, over their heart, on their wrists. Um, I put it on a burn that I had. I just love it and I'm using it constantly. And the Rose Spa Lotion. As we know, the Rose Spa Lotion does not, um, um, does not have PV. And so it is available for, from the, for healing hands, to so the benefit of healing hands. You can order one on your back office, but it, as I said, it has no PV. Everything that you spend on the Rose Lotion will go directly to the Healing Hands Foundation. Okay, so yes, that is my last recommendation. So the interesting thing about most of the products that I've recommend here, recommended here today is that they're available as part of our Fall Essentials um, uh, promo so you can earn a free and now this is an NFR promo that means it has to be ordered through an order in the United States you want to earn a free 15 milliliter bottle of doTERRA balance serenity and citrus bliss by placing any single 200 PV order from October 1st through October 31st so you still have time and this is there's a limit of four per account per household so um, I'm super excited that many of the um, uh, recommendations, Citrus Bliss is an invigorating blend. 
Um, you might try balancing that in, especially if, if sometimes when we feel depressed or stressed, we tend to feel listless or without energy. Absolutely inc incorporate um, citrus bliss in your routine. If, however, you're feeling more anxious and jittery, you want to add the grounding or the restful blend. So this is a terrific way for you to get your uh, de-stress oils and start using them. And if you've been using them all the time, a great way to replenish your supply for a really reasonable price. The other things I want to remind you of is that um, you can save 10% in October on ginger, again, from um, on your NFR. It is sourced from Madagascar and ginger essential oil derived from the fresh rhizome of the ginger plant, which is basically a chunky root, if you will. This uh, subterranean stalk of the plant that shoots out the root system. A featured ingredient in many Asian dishes, ginger has a hot, fragrant flavor when used as a kitchen spice. And um, sometimes when my ginger is looking a little bit uh, wilted or um, dried up and I throw it in the food, it doesn't give any flavor, so I give an extra drop or two of ginger essential oil and it perks the flavor up of vegetables and other stir fries of rice. I love to use ginger essential oil while cooking. Um, please remember that you can still order the post-convention tour box. Um, it's pictured here with the birch oil. You will not receive the birch oil. I just want to make that clear, but you will receive, excuse me, everything else that's shown here the On Guard Spray, the Jasmine, Neroli, and Rose Touch Roll-Ons, the Copaiba Siberian Fur, Blue Tansy, and the Yoga Collection Kit. So um, that is um, us on special order now if you're attending a post-convention tour. I did give out the, um, the uh, code to, amp to, um, to order it. I know those kits are going super fast, so you want to uh, make sure that you order your kit as soon as possible. Post-convention post tour, I think, goes on until November or part of November, but um, I know I'm going to one in Manhattan on Thursday. I hope some of you are joining me or will be joining me there, um, but uh, this is a great kit to have. I have to say I'm using everything in the box. And last but not least, Oh, oh, actually, I have two last but not least. So number one is tangerine. We kind of forgot about tangerine in the whole hubbub of the convention. Tangerine was announced in August before the convention because I think they wanted to, didn't want it to be, um, I don't know, overshadowed by some of the other more flashy oils that were going to be coming out. I love the aroma and the taste of tangerine. It's sort of um, yummy and sweet. It's a little bit nicer, I think, than um, uh, grapefruit in my morning oil and has almost the same amount of limonene in it, which is that ingredient that detoxifies our helps to detoxify us. We um, uh, should be using uh, citrus oils in our water throughout the day, but pick the one that you like, folks, because if you don't like it, you're not going to use it. Tangerine may be a great way for you to switch it up and use something new. And finally, have you tried this lemon sassy gum? Um, sometimes I find that when I'm really stressed out, if I start chewing a piece of gum, I can get actually get out my nerves on my piece of gum without actually probably grinding or gritting my teeth. It's also um, a healthy way for you to maintain your metabolism. It's very tasty, uh, made with sort of mint, lemon, and a little bit of uh, grapefruit and um, sort of that citrusy, um, slim and sassy taste. Um, I, if you have not had a chance to try it, please try it and see how you like it. It's a great way to kind of, I don't know, chomp down on your problems, if you will. I've actually kept a box lately on my desk and I've been using it as a coping method and I think it's, it's working pretty well. So that's our presentation for today. I'm actually going to stop the share now and then I'm going to take a few questions. I'm also going to stop the recording.